Pony. Released in 2001, I remember playing it as a kid, managing to pass it later in my mid-teenage years. The more I looked back on it, the more I appreciated the game, but I also became more aware of its flaws. This is quite a personal game to me, as it could have been so much more than it was, but then again, that could be said for any other game. What could this old game from 2001 have that other games don't? What makes it special, worthy of being played by the generation of today? That is the question I will try to answer for you and give my verdict while I'm doing it. Welcome, I'm Seth Kiperis, and this is my review for Oni. Story Set in the year of 2032, the game depicts the future of the world in a dystopian light. Earth has been so polluted that only a number of cities are habitable and the governments of all the nations have united to form one global government. The government sugarcoats the truth by saying the outside of the cities are wilderness preserves that preserve nature for the future generations to see. The government counters the problem by building power plants that produce oxygen. You play as Kanoko, a woman working for the Technology Crime Task Force, or TCTF for short which would be the police department if you upgraded to be a military division with some intelligence gathering capabilities. The TCTF is primarily fighting against the Syndicate, which is a criminal organization that is, well, surprisingly well organized and supplied, with proper grunts and hardware to boot. After passing the training mission that shows you the basics of gameplay, you are sent on your first proper mission. With Commander Griffin as your commanding officer and Shinatama as your advisor, you infiltrate the warehouse in order to find out what happened to Chung, the mole that TCTF planted to get info. And by infiltrate, I mean beating the living shit out of every worker and grunt that you meet. Did I also mention that Shinatama is an android? They call it a simulated life doll, SLD for short. Sadly, Chung is deader than dead, and the only thing having any sort of clue for you is the PDA that he left. You continue to dominate every guy that looks at you the wrong way, you find out the syndicate is trying to move some important stuff with a truck that you turn over with a crane. Further clues lead to a manufacturing plant. And that's all I'll tell you about the story. Without spoiling too much, the first half of the story is about fighting the syndicate, while the second part of the story is more about self-discovery. While the story is interesting, it suffers from poor pacing and poor exposition, especially when trying to add flesh to the universe that the game shows and the characters that you see. So if you want to know how the Syndicate came into existence, and how they removed the Mafia, you will need to read it from a console, and it looks like this. Attractive, isn't it? Luckily, most of the story is presented nicely and clearly in cutscenes. It's just a shame that the rest of the juicy things you need to discover on your own, since the gameplay doesn't exactly flow like that. In games such as Skyrim and Oblivion, where the world is presented to you and reading books enriches the lore and experience, and thus builds the world even more, that works because the pacing is good, the opportunities and gameplay suits that, but in Oni, it's basically running from point A to point B, beating everyone to a pulp. And it's a shame, because Oni does have an interesting universe to present. Gameplay. Simply put, Oni is a third-person beat-em-up action game with a bit of shooting. You can punch, kick, sprint, jump, slide. For CQC specials, you can throw enemies in a variety of ways, break their backs, use their necks as swinging poles, disarm them, and more. For weapons, you have ballistic and energy weapons. Ballistics include pistols, sniper rifles, and grenade launchers. Plasma rifles, stun pistols, energy beams and screaming cannons are based on energy. And you heard me right, screaming cannons. They shoot an energy ball that moves in the general direction you aimed. If it detects a life form, it moves to it and drains it of its life energy, thus killing it slowly. Pretty neat. But I did say it has a bit of shooting, and this is reflected in the fact that you can only carry one weapon and five magazines of each ammo type. I suggest you choose wisely and according to the situation. For power-ups, you have hypos for healing, a force field that protects you against projectiles and an invisibility cloak that gives you the invisibility for 30 seconds. The hypo can also be used as a booster, increasing your health and damage for a short period. But the toys are only good as the people you play with, or rather against, and they are diverse and color-coded for the most part. Yellow are regular guys, blue are veterans, and red are elites. You have your usual grunts, their female counterparts that attack as fast as you, ninjas, tanks, wrestlers, suicide bombers, 
and more. Each of them having a different move set and a way of fighting you. The ninjas are frail, but their nimble movement and fast and unconventional attacks will keep you on your toes. The tanks are more or less predictable, but damn if they don't hit like a truck and take like a tank. The controls are precise and simple to use. Left click punches, right click kicks. However, that does leave the execution of combos problematic. Some combos that you want to execute require timing and mind reading of the enemy's next move, which makes them near impossible to use. Factor in that for the most part you don't even need to use these combos and the gameplay can get quite dull. The enemy AI is a mixed bag. On one hand, they sometimes approach in a zigzag formation to avoid fire, but in CQC you can already guess their pattern of attacks and then block or counter them. Did I also mention that you can block in this game? You just need to face the enemy and as long as he doesn't perform a special move or a super attack, you'll block just fine. Nothing much to add, that's all you really do in the game. You punch people. Sometimes you'll need to unlock some consoles or avoid some laser trip wires, but that's about it. And I guess you can try to do some stealth to take out some enemies, but that isn't exactly encouraged by the gameplay presented. Had to do my civil duty I owe to the community. When I'm a kid, brush your teeth, eat vegetables and pray only. Actually, you should pray only right now. Okay, that's it. That's it. Where are my whiskey and cigarettes? Uh, the whiskey is up in the attic and the cigarettes are in the living room down there. Great, I'm gonna knock myself out. Because okay. you're boring, because your room is more boring than watching the paint dry. I think you just insulted all the people that like to watch the paint dry. I don't give a flying. Back to the review. Graphics. The graphics are okay, although it's obvious they haven't aged well. Character models are serviceable, but facial expressions on the characters are non-existent and blocky, though I like how they overcame that in cutscenes where they basically added a card portrait to reflect how the character is feeling. The best I could say about the graphics is that they are representable. Character movement is well done and believable, with good looking combat moves. Projectiles from weapons are distinct, so that is a plus as well. Whether it be the voice acting, gunfire or the music, it is well done in Oni. The voice acting brings out the characters to life, each having a personality of their own, clear from just hearing them. Griffin being the win at all costs type guy, while Konoko would make sure justice is done to all. Even the average enemies and allies are voiced with effort. Nothing worthy of an award, but very solid. Guns sound distinct, so you won't mix a pistol with an automatic pistol, and punches and kicks sound like from a movie, which, while not realistic, does add flavor to combat. Music is used sparingly, but when it is used, it hits the moment perfectly. Whether it be an action scene full of combat or an emotional moment with some important characters, the music hits the nail every time. Now for the verdict. In the end, I would say Oni is to Bungie what is Alice in Wonderland for Tim Burton, but in a different way. Whereas Tim Burton continued to do movies in his own way, with varying reception, Bungie simply forgot that Oni even existed. The point being, instead of giving it another chance and trying to improve upon it, they simply left it to die. And considering the game promised a lot but didn't live up to it, I could see why. The game was supposed to have a mech boss battle, more weapons and a multiplayer mode that was removed during development. If the game was developed longer and with more care, especially with dedication to the story, it could have been a unique masterpiece. With everything said and done, I can't really give this game more than a 7 out of 10, with a recommendation that you should definitely play it. It is unique, at least in my eyes, but I could be wrong, in which case I do apologize for that. I consider it a gem that is rough around the edges, but definitely worth experiencing. I thank you all for the time and attention that you gave me. I wish you farewell, and until the next review. Oh, and Mr. Burton, take it easy and try to recapture the glory of your previous works. I know you can do it.